good morning. Today is Wednesday, November 9th. Thanks so much for waking up with us. I'm Sarah Kirkley. And I'm Stephanie Crace. The dust has mostly settled as people from across the state and around the nation took to the polls yesterday to cast their vote. We start off our election coverage with the biggest statewide race in Nebraska, the race for governor between Republican Jim Pillen, Democrat Carol Blood, and Libertarian Scott Zimmerman. The winner will most likely get to choose Senator Ben Sasse's eventual replacement in the U.S. Senate. The Associated Press projects that Jim Pillen will be our next governor. NTV's Steve White has more from Pillen's party. Nebraska's next governor will come from outstate Nebraska with a background in agriculture. As governor elect Jim Billen says, we're just getting started. There is no place like Nebraska, right? <laughs> we are just getting started. Nebraska's next governor, Jim Billen, declares victory. It's just the phenomenal joy that we all have in our hearts for tonight for the future of Nebraska. A Husker football player turned veterinarian and hog farmer. Pillen has served on the university's Board of Regents, and now his attention turns to working with 49 state senators. For Nebraska to grow, we have to have everybody be successful. Uh, all of Nebraska, Omaha and Lincoln are really important pieces of that. While he had the endorsement of Governor Pete Ricketts, the state GOP saw power wrestled away from that establishment faction. Still, Pillen won the primary and now the general election. Along the way, he had a strong backing from ag groups, including Nebraska Farm Bureau. Yeah, so we've been talking to our members for probably two years that one of the most important things that we're going to have in Nebraska relative to policy and how Nebraska's run is to be a next governor. Pillen is the first farmer in the governor's office in decades. He gets it, and so that's, that's, uh, that's going to be pretty fun as an ag producer, having a governor that, on that side of it, really understands agriculture. We don't have to do any reteaching there. Agriculture plays a huge role. We're the breadbasket of the world. Pillen pledged to fight for what he calls Nebraska values, saying he'll put faith back in the public square. We can and we will protect innocent life. The governor-elect chose not to debate, instead holding small town hall events focused on issues like property taxes, and says he's ready to get to work. It's important that we develop relationships and we find common ground for Nebraska. Attitudinal change, shift, so we focus on what's best for Nebraska. And it looks like Nebraska will need a new U.S. Senator. Governor-elect Jim Pillen says he has not started the process to replace Senator Ben Sass. Reporting in Lincoln, I'm Steve White. Well, not long after he was projected to win, one of Pillen's opponents, Carol Blood, conceded the race. She thanked her supporters for their help with her campaign. What we loved about our campaign is we brought hope to people who truly felt that their voices had not been heard in decades. And so those people, I say, don't give up hope. Right, we hear you. We're going to keep fighting for you. That is never going to change. I do wish my opponent luck. I hope and pray that he will be more reactive to the media and to the voters that are different than he is and believe other things than he believes because we have to bring all Nebraska together in order for us to move our state forward for a better tomorrow for all. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the House of Representatives, and we begin with the District 3 seat, which encompasses much of Nebraska outside of the Omaha and Lincoln areas. The Associated Press projecting a win for Republican incumbent Adrian Smith. His ninth straight win in the 3rd District. He beats out Democrat David Else and legal marijuana now candidate Mark Elworth Jr., garnering nearly 80% of the vote. In the 1st District in the Lincoln area, Republican incumbent Mike Flood facing a second challenge in five months from Democrat Patty Pansing Brooks. Flood will retain his seat in the House, getting 58% of the vote. Now to the 2nd District in the Omaha area. It was a tight one between Republican incumbent Don Bacon and Democrat State Senator Tony Vargas. The Associated Press projects that Bacon will win a fourth term in the district, beating Vargas by just over 6,000 votes. Now to the race to replace Attorney General Doug Peterson, Republican and Speaker of the Legislature Mike Hilgers, taking on legal marijuana now party member Larry Bollinger. Hilgers taking this one easily with around 70% of the vote. Now to the race for state treasurer. This one pitted Republican incumbent John Morante against Libertarian Katrina Thompson. Morante will win re-election, beating Thompson with around 73% of the vote.
Now we turn to ballot questions. Nebraskans voting on three measures. First, voter ID. Nebraskans voting overwhelmingly in favor of requiring voters to provide government identification at polling places. Also approved was the push to raise Nebraska's minimum wage. That measure will gradually increase the minimum wage from the current $9 an hour to $15 by 2026 passing. Nebraskans also voting in favor of Amendment 1, making it possible for airports in the state to expand the number of flights that they can have. Now we head to Grand Island and the race for mayor there. It was a tight one between incumbent Roger Steele and Doug Brown. Unofficial results showing that Mayor Steele has won another term. And TV's Rissell Ventura has more from both candidates. Mayor Roger Steele was re-elected by Grand Island voters to hold that position for four more years. Steele was going against Doug Brown former operation security manager at the Central Nebraska Regional Airport. I very much appreciate their support and I also have a message for anybody who runs for office. I respect that decision. It's a, it's a difficult thing to do. Now Steele, who will be serving his second term as Grand Island mayor, says his main focus is economic development, the creation of new jobs and public safety. But another thing is very important. The people of Grand Island are living through some of the highest inflation in 40 years. I want to make sure that city government is very careful with its spending because it's very difficult for people right now to, to uh, afford the basic necessities. Brown says he will continue to be active in the community. I'm still part of a lot of organizations in the community, uh, fundraising and, and different veterans organizations, the Shriners, the Nebraska Admirals, the Rotary, uh, lots, lots of things I do and I'll just continue doing that. Both candidates say they are thankful for all of those in the city who voted this year. Reporting in Grand Island, and Rissol Ventura. There are also some big races for state senate. And TV's Gwyneth Falloon joins us now with more on that. Gwen. Sarah and Stephanie, that's right. We're going to start with uh, District 34 this morning. That district encompasses Nance, Merrick, Hamilton, and parts of Hall counties. It was Lauren, <coughs> excuse me, Lauren Lippincott taking on Michael Reimers. Lippincott is going to come out on top in this one, winning 67% of the vote. Now to District 38, stretching from Glenville to McCook. Dave Merman taking on Tyler Kappel. Merman would win easily with 65% of that vote. Now to District 42 in the North Platte area, incumbent Mike Jacobson facing Chris Bruns. It is a tight one with Jacobson getting 51% to Bruns 49%.